In this episode, we drive through the spectacular Buller Gorge and McDonald's, we attempt to film a tutorial at the iconic Pancake Rocks, and we strike it lucky at Lake Matheson with great, fantastic morning light. and I left our home in Nelson and headed down the wild west coast of the South Island. In the first road trip of this tutorial, we were travelling in our trusty 1996 Honda CRV. It's so comfortable, we've actually slept inside it lots. Driving down the untamed Bulla River to the ocean is like passing through a portal into a different time zone. The pace of life on the coast is definitely slower. The waterways are wild. The rainforest is lush. And the surf is dangerous. In fact, my older brother drowned here way back in 1978. He was a hippie, escaping from the frenetic pace of city life. G'day, we're on the west coast of New Zealand now, heading down the Punakaiki coastline towards Greymouth. This place is quite special to my family because just down this creek here, White Horse Creek, is where my brother lived and died. When we arrived at Punakaiki, the place was pumping. Even though summer had long gone, buses full of tourists were crowding us out. For the umpteenth time, we walked the short trail through the Nikau Forest to the iconic Pancake Rocks. My intention was to film a short tutorial for this course, but it was too difficult as I kept getting interrupted. We waited patiently for full tide, hoping that the Putai blowhole would actually explode with water but we waited in vain. No blowhole today. We pulled up at an isolated beach and ate lunch. Life really wasn't that bad after all. Further on, we made our routine visit to Macca's for a flat white. Let's get some coffee. Heading south, we turned up the music and enjoyed the ride. Hours later in the historic township of Ross, we saw the relics of the 1960s gold rush. And we shot a stock photo. The CRV sliced through the sun showers, the window wipers were working overtime along the flat farmland, past Whataroa, chasing the light before the sun slipped behind the hills. Numerous one-lane bridges are a real feature of the west coast. Finally, we manoeuvre the CRV into our accommodation, the top 10 holiday park near Fox Glacier. It was dinner time and Lynette was playing MasterChef. As usual, my wife knows just what a tired photographer likes to eat. Mmm, sausages on soggy bread, tomato ketchup, yeah. We headed to bed, ready for an early start. G'day, it's Ray here. 5.30 in the morning, I've got up pretty early so I can go off and um, capture the sunrise over Mount Cook at Lake Matheson. Um, I'm just having a 
very early breakfast um, and uh, trying to wake up. I'm definitely not a morning person, but hopefully the photos I get will be worth it. It was about six o'clock in the morning when I started up the Honda and cruised along the Fox River Flats toward my goal, Lake Matheson. But in the half-light, I couldn't find the track. Things had changed since I was last here. I was losing valuable time when I finally stumbled across the bridge on the easy trail into the forest. Stupid me, I chose the longer route to Reflection Island. Because of this, a tour group arrived on the viewing platform before I did, so I was forced to set up my camera gear on the staircase. This is probably the most photographed lake in all of New Zealand, so even in autumn, the keener photographers are up bright and bushy-tailed, hence the hurry. We were all vying for space on the wooden jetty, which provides the perfect position to capture really nice reflections. At the far end of the lake, our tallest two mountains rear up to nearly 4,000 metres above the sea. On the left is Mount Tasman, on the right is Mount Cook, the highest hill in Aotearoa. It is best to shoot scenes such as this at dawn, before the wind destroys any reflections in the water. The mist was slowly rising, but clouds were crowding the sky like unwelcome visitors. We were hoping to see the rising sun light up the mountain tops. It was okay, mediocre at best. You see, with landscape photography, patience is an important part of success. I was rewarded with my patience, because sometimes it's just best to hang around and linger a bit longer. When the tourists departed, so did the clouds, and I was blessed with much better light for my tutorial. The shots look pretty, very similar. So it's important to try and strive and do, strive for create. When shooting reflections, I use an ND grad filter on the front of my lens, just to darken the sky a bit and narrow and compress the dynamic range of the scene. But it's important um, to remember that a reflection should never be brighter than its source. So the sky should always be a bit lighter than the reflection in the lake. Otherwise it can look quite unnatural. The photo shoot was over and it was time to leave. Perfect weather on the west coast is as rare as hen's teeth. So I was rather pleased with my morning's outing. And watch out for the next episode where my smartphone gets smashed up falling from my moving vehicle. We scout around remote beaches and a waterfall looking for photo opportunities. As we drive over Haas Pass to the town of Wanaka. And finally we visit a raft of tourist hotspots which includes the bungee jumping. If you're keen on checking out my full course, click here.